So we have our veg can piece and we have magnets. These magnets are adhesive on the backing. So we're going to place them like so to where the stitch holes are still visible and it's about a quarter inch inward from the top or bottom stitch holes. Now we are going to remove the sticky backer and place it like so. Now don't separate the magnets. Um, I had to kind of Frankenstein my way into <laughs> getting us magnets. So leave them as is. And we are simply going to fold like that. Make sure that we're going to line up nicely. Um, the leather, since it is veg tan, it will kind of keep a crease for a moment. We're going to remove the other sticky backer and then we're going to eye it up and try and place it perfectly to where the stitch holes are still completely visible and press. Easy peasy, right? Not too bad. So when we open up our veg tan piece, this is what it will look like. Now this is our double-sided adhesive tape. There's multiple methods we can use to glue pieces of leather together. Um, contact cement is my favorite, but depending on the application, I do love double-sided sticky tape. All right, so we're gonna pull off one side, not the other, and we're going to place it gently, not gently, we're gonna place it on the inside of the edge of the leather. It is going to partially cover the stitch lines and that's totally fine. I just tore off the extra. And we're going to do this to all four sides. We're going to do the same thing right over here, placing it right on the inside. Now, if it goes over the edge, what's going to happen is as we burnish, you're going to have weird sticky adhesive poking out between the liner and the actual leather. So just be careful with it. Worst case scenario. Worst case scenario, we'll have to like, um, carefully fillet or skive off the edge. So it's not the end of the world, but just try and be a little meticulous to save future issues. All right, so we have applied our double-sided adhesive tape to all four sides and we are ready to place our liner. <sighs> Actually, you know what? We are going to add something else to the box um, because I really want the liner to kind of stay where I put it. So I'm gonna add an extra double-sided tape to the boxes. I'm glad we're doing this on the front side. So, um, and you can use anything to pull these off. I personally love using scratch alls, um, which will be in either next month's or the month after's box because I love them, love them, love them. But I use them mostly to pluck off <laughs> the back side of tape. All right, so we're gonna remove our tape.
And then we have our lining, it's not leather, we have our liner. Um, this is a little bit stretchy, which is kind of why I went with it, because we have to make it over the magnets. So one side looks more fabric-y than the other, the other one looks like fake leather. So we're gonna roll with the fake leather out and we're going to carefully place it. on our veg tan. Now we're going to be careful to make sure that eh, the holes line up. That's gonna be important. But ultimately, it's gonna stick right as you lay it down. So just be a little meticulous to make sure your holes line up. And if it goes over the edge, it's fine. We can cut it off. It's not the end of the world. This is art. Art sometimes is, you know, chaotic and messy. So we're gonna roll with it. So we're gonna span it, pull it a little bit to the edge. And we are going to line up our holes again. And we're just gonna press just like that. And again, on the sides, we are just gonna press down. And it might help to kinda, you know, sandwich it a little and just kind of pinch it at the edge and then push it into where you want it to go. Oh yeah, I like that. Again, you're gonna need to pull a little bit because we're making it reach around the magnet. And we wanna make sure that as we press, we're going to get the stitch holes more or less perfectly lined up. Now this fabric is actually uh, sealed on the edges because um, I actually, or I, I laser cut it. And so it is heat sealed. Which should prevent any future fraying or anything like that. And we're just pressing down on the edges. a little pull here and there, making sure to align it with the outer edge and then pressing inward. And again, we're lining up our holes as we go. I don't know if you can tell. All right, so we have So now that we have pressed our liner to our veg tan, our holes are lined up. We have the body ready to roll on our money clip. Now, yeah, this part's kind of easy peasy or difficult depending on how we lined up our stitch holes. We're gonna move on to the good stuff now. So now we're gonna learn some technical skill. The stitch that we're gonna use to permanently stitch together the veg tan and the liner, we're gonna use a saddle stitch. So we're gonna grab our two needles and our thread. The saddle stitch requires two needles. We're not gonna be going up and over and up and over and up and over. We're gonna be going in and out, in and out with two hands, two needles. This waxed thread is not tied. Since it is waxed, it kind of stays exactly how you kind of mold it because of the wax on it. So we're just gonna unravel our thread.
So we have our thread unwound and ready. Now when stitching, training moment, when stitching things, say you were going to make your own template, own pattern, and you're trying to figure out exactly how much thread to use. The general rule of thumb is that three times the total length of your project is generally how much thread you're going to need. So I always am scared of not having enough and so So a general rule of thumb when we are going to fig like so a rule of thumb when it comes to hand stitching is that the overall length of the thread that you are going to need for your specific project is generally three times the total length of your project. So if we were going to measure if this were on a spool, we'd be taking it here, 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 and then here, and then we'd want to do three times that length if I had, you know, less mess everywhere. So one, two, three, and then a little extra. I always leave a little extra because I'm more of a, you know, measure three times, cut once type of person. So I always give a little extra just because I'm paranoid. It's not the end of the world if your thread's too short, you can always start a new stitch line. Um, but the issue that you're going to run into is that you're going to have exposed stitches, which I try not to ever do. Now, we're going to take our thread, and since this is waxed, um, depending on your knowledge or history with like needles and threads, generally, I've seen people do all sorts of stuff, lick them, whatever, you don't need to do that. Since they're waxed, they are a little bit tacky. They're not sticky, they're tacky. I usually take my fingernail and a finger and just kind of like press and scrape to kind of make a flat point if that's even the right terminology. But we're going to take the thread and we're going to go into the needle super easy and pull a little bit. And then you just kind of bend it and it's going to stay. And we're going to do the same thing to the other side. We're going to go to the other end of the thread. We're going to pinch and pull and we're going to slide the eye of the needle right onto it. Easy peasy, no problem. Pull a little bit and then fold it. And overall, we're going to end up with this. Now, we're going to start our stitch. To do the saddle stitch, you're going to go in one end and out the other. And you're also going to want to make sure that your thread is equal distance on each side, which means you're going to have to even out however you, um, however far you pulled and increased your thread. And then pull to the center. So the very center of our thread is right there. And Now we can start stitching. With the saddle stitch, it is important to always go in first with the same hand or the same needle over and over and over again. It helps with the consistency of your stitch. So we're going to go in the veg tan end and we're going to leave our needle in there and we're going to go in the lining end. Now, depending on the size of your stitch holes, I made ours 1.5 millimeters. Instead of trying to push needles through and poke in your fingers, what I like to do is I grab right below the actual eyes and use the thread to guide. And then the needles never actually get in like close enough proximity to stab me. Um, this is a habit I learned from being stabbed many times. And then we can take the needles and just pull through. Now, there is tools available to make stitching a lot easier. 
don't know if you can tell, but we have a nice clean stitch line. There's stitching ponies that actually grip, but since we don't have those with us right now, we're just gonna do it exactly this way. So we're just gonna rest it. And again, we're gonna go in with the same needle first every time. So we're gonna go in through the veg tan side, and then in through the lining side, we're gonna stick our fingers right below the eyes and we're gonna push in that way and not stab ourselves. And then we're gonna pull. Just give it a little tug and now we have two stitches. So we're gonna repeat that all the way around and we're gonna keep the stitches tight Um, if I wasn't filming, I'd probably be sticking this between my knees because that's just how I roll. Um, actually, you know what? We're going to do it. We're going to do it.
So at this point, we're overlapping with our thread. So all we need to do is take our needle and pull towards the edge of the thread and shorten the overhang. And then refold, do the same thing to the other side. And now as we stitch, we won't have two threads going through the hole from each side. All right, so don't cut your threads, but we've made it to the end and we have completely stitched the money clip. I'm gonna make sure our edges are pressed down. Now, to end, our saddle stitch, what we need to do is we actually... All right, so I realized um, after, you know, one of you awesome folks brought it to my attention that it cuts it off where we end the stitch. So how to actually end a saddle stitch? You want to go backwards through one of the last stitches, but instead of coming all the way through like this, we're actually going to pull between the veg tan and the lining, and you're going to come out the very side like that so you're not going to have exposed stitched in or stitch ends on either side and then you're going to do the same thing with your other needle you're going to go in through only one layer and then come out in between the two So you'll have double stitches and two threads coming out between the two layers. From there, all we need to do is tie it off. And then we'll cut it. And generally what I do is I press a blade against where I want the thread to cut and then I just pull up. 
And again, I press gently and then just pull up on the thread. And then as you press back in, You don't have actual exposed stitch ends. Now, depending on what kind of thread you use in the future, you can burn it at the end to melt it so it doesn't fray if you're using nylon threads. With this waxed thread, it doesn't really have a problem with that, but you can melt it. Um, if you do decide to burn it, you can press down after and it'll kind of flatten, but that's how you get kind of the professional ending. This is my, you know, mess up leather. But that's how you get a professional ending on a project. All right. So here's where the sponge comes into play. We have our sponge and I, like I said, I'm cheap. And so I always cut them. I don't recommend cutting them all wet. Um, they do puff up to definitely a much larger size. So I usually take my one, my one fourth, I guess, and then depending on so we have our sponge and they definitely puff up to be bigger so we have our sponge it's gonna soak up for a minute and then for reference they expand quite a bit but so the basic burnishing technique is literally taking your damp sponge, not dripping, just damp and running it along the edge of your leather. And then we burnish. So we have our leather, we have our tokenol, and we have our burnisher. Now this little doe foot applicator, we're just going to take our product in one hand and the applicator in the other, and we're going to gently brush it along the edge, just like so. You don't need tons, it's not the end of the world if it's a little much, just want to wet the edge nicely. and. You're gonna take your burnisher and we are going to use my burnisher because it's I don't want to you know mess up one of your guys's so my burnisher used to actually look like this um, through you know lots of use <laughs> they end up looking like this so they actually you know are the same burnisher well same wood type. And it just kind of happens. Here's one that's kind of in between. But, so we're gonna take our burnisher and we are going to gently use friction, not pressure. Friction, not pressure, this is very important. You will deform your projects if you attempt to use pressure versus just friction. There's different width slots in the burnisher. So you find one that, you know, fits adequately and you gently use friction along the edge, just fast, fast, fast. And what happens is it actually uses the natural um, in oils and waxes tannis in the leather to create a burnished edge. Let's see if I can get it to show. That's where it goes from the rough raw to shiny smooth. And that's what we're going to go for all the way around. Again, we're going to grab some tokenol and we're going to put it along the edge and
we're going to use friction and we're just going to run it along. Ooh. And it just gives it that nice sealed glassy edge. I love it. I love tokenol. You can use just water to burnish edges, um, but it's just not the same. Tokenol gives it just that little extra, and I think it's beautiful. Now with the burnisher, these are, the slots are meant for different um, weights of leather, but I kind of just like jump around to whatever I feel is getting me the best edge right then and making sure that I get all my angles, which is why the whole thing's dirty and not just, you know, one of the rings. But there we have it. We have a money clip. Now the fun part is whatever you want to do to it. You can leave it exactly as it is right now, or you can do whatever you want. You can tool it, press into it, carve into it. You don't necessarily need professional leather tools to kind of make it your own. You can imprint or deboss leather with anything you have. Um, you just got to get it wet first and then you get artistic with it. <laughs>